Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. My name is Gabby Snyder, and I'm joined here by Jamie Boyd for the next match in our top eight here at the World Cup uh, VGC by Victory Road, sponsored by Elgato. Uh, Jamie, it's been a really exciting morning so far. What have been some of your highlights? Well, the games have been just very fast-paced, so we saw Xerneas put in a lot of work in that first game. Uh, that was able to even even take the game without setting up a geomancy at that point and then just a really really big showing of how how strong groudon is against sashing teams and they don't don't really have the answers for it uh, so two teams are able to really just sweep through both of their games and we'll have to see if that is going to be the case going forward into this next game that we're going to be jumping back to china and singapore uh, so we can just have a quick look at how they're doing at the moment we did see before uh, that they were 2-0 uh, before and now they're going to be 2-1 now that we've on stream so we can just jump straight into of uh, the team preview here. Going on to what Wang Yuzhang is going to be bringing. It looks like it's, they're going to be bringing that Zashin, Incineroar, Rillaboom, Pelipper, Landorus Incarnate, and Nihiligo. Yeah, the Pelipper is really the standout Pokemon here for me as gets Tailwind, gets access to uh, Drizzle, both things that really benefit the Zashin. But, uh, you know, it's a really powerful team. And I think that uh, Yuxiang's opponent, uh, Evan Wang, if we want to jump over to Team Singapore, uh, is going to struggle in the matchup against it. Um, you know, we saw a little bit earlier, Evan is running a very interesting team that we've already seen on stream already. Yeah, we did see Singapore feature a very similar team. So if we jump over to, to Singapore and have a look at what they're going to be running, we did see that they are bringing the Xerneas team that was featured just earlier uh, by Hakim for Singapore as well. So it looks like they are the, the Singapore are going to be relying on this Xerneas team uh, with the Incineroar, Entei, Venusaur, Ndidi, and the Torkoal. Uh, but you do want to be facing down the Xerneas when you've got your Sash in. Uh, but the weather, there's going to be a weather ore here that isn't usually the case uh, when you've got the Xerneas versus Sash in teams. You've got the Pelipper versus Torkoal. Yeah, Pelipper versus Torkoal, and then also having the support of Entei, I think, are going to be really important for Evan, given how prominent of a position Zacian uh, can play against all the other Pokemon that Evan has brought. Uh, what I am curious to see is what item that Entei is holding, uh, because depending on if it's an Assault Fest or a Choice Scarf, I think that can really make or break this strategy against uh, the Pelipper and the Zacian in particular. You know, it's possible that it might just be a simple switch in the Torkoal once the Pelipper's on the field to set up Sun, and uh, you know, then that Zashin's going to be in a really tough spot. Uh, but you know, we saw this team have a couple of tricks up its sleeve earlier. I believe you saw the safety goggles on the Ndidi. Uh, I'm sure the Venusaur must have a couple tricks up its sleeve as well because it's not a Pokemon that we've seen too often in Series 10. Yeah, so you've got you really want to be supporting this Ernest just get the, up the Geomancy and then use your fire types to be able to deal with the steel types that come out. Uh, but when you're facing down the opposing Pelipper, you're not going to be able to use your fire types as effectively to be able to do that uh, because that Drizzle is really going to put a stop to the damage output that can come out. It's going to keep the Zashin very safe uh, from the, those fire type attacks. There will almost certainly be some kind of weather war going on between the Torkoal and the Pelipper uh, because the Zashian really wants to be able to deal with the Xerneas and you want the fire types to be able to deal with the, the Zashian as well and the Pelipper is going to be able to keep that very safe as well. Uh, even something like the Nihiligo is very strong into the Xerneas as well as all the, the fire types as well. If you're facing down fire and uh, fire and fairy types, Rock and Poison is a, a very good typing that you want to be having. It just really needs to contend with that uh, Indeedee that could be going for the expanding forces. Maybe the Venusaur is carrying Earth Power. You could be seeing the Stomping Tantrum from the, the Entei as well. But you've got Zashian and Nihiligo as your answers that could come out for the Xerneas. Uh, usually, Zashian teams do just opt for the Zashian to be able to, to, to beat the Xerneas. Because if you just land one Behemoth Blade into the Xerneas, you've probably picked up the KO at that point, and then you don't need any more answers to it and having an extra answer here with that Nile ego it's going to be really really strong into the team uh, that was brought for with the Xerneas the partners don't like going up against the Nile ego uh, we do get the sneak peek of the choice calf coming out so it will have to choose whether it wants to lock in something like the sludge one for the Xerneas or the rock type attacks that can hit the fire types as well the poison will still do very reasonable damage to the rock to, to the fire types uh, but yeah, it's it's a, a, going to be a very awkward position for the Xerneas because uh, you want to be trying to set up the geomancy and then trying to get get the fire types to get something going but that pedal could really be putting a stop to that yeah i really do like how we got a sneak peek of that choice scarf on the nile ego because like i mentioned earlier i think the held item of the entei on evan's side of the field is really going to come into play as we start game one of this match china versus singapore singapore needs to win this match in order to tie up the score china needs to win two more to win the set 
let's get this game started with Incineroar and Xerneas out on the field for Evan. You know, a very standard uh, lead for the Xerneas teams. Nihiligo and the Zacian out for you, Sean. Yeah, you want, want to be catching that Xerneas with the Nihiligo and the Zacian lead, and you've done just that. You do take the Intimidates uh, for good measure for the Zacian. Not going to really care about it for the Nihiligo, and probably not going to be able to become a knockout with something like the Sludge Bomb on the Xerneas either. You get to fake out one of these Pokemon, and then the other one will be able to do some huge damage to the opposing Xerneas. So if you want to go for the Geomancy and fake out, you have to accept that your Xerneas is going to be taking a huge amount of damage on the way. Uh, whether that's the, the Behemoth Blades, which will still be doing a huge chunk, chunk of damage, even with the Intimidate, depending on how the Xerneas is, is trained, it might even still be picking up a knockout. Uh, so maybe you do need to go for the fake out into the opposing Zashin. That will leave the Nihiligo free to go for its poison type attacks if it wants to, uh, before the Xerneas would get up the Geomancy. So it'll be able to still, still do huge amounts of damage. A combination of two Sludge Bombs may be able to pick up the knockout on the Xerneas if you're hitting one before for the Geomancy you want after, it still could be enough, especially if you're potentially going to pick up a poison on the way as well. Well, I don't think it's a sludge bomb that we're going to be seeing from this Nihiligo, at least not quite yet, as it will be flinched by Fake Out from that Incineroar. Azashin will be moving next with Behemoth Blade, targeting direct into that Xerneas, it's going to deal a lot of damage. Uh, could possibly knock it out, depending on how it's trained, but it's able to hold on with just a little bit of health and get that Geomancy up to boost those stats, as we all know it tends to do. And that's a huge amount of damage to get your Geomancy up. And you're not really going to do too much damage to the Nihiligo or the Zashin either, because even though you've got this boost now and you should be outspeeding, they're going to be resisting the Fairy as well. They are, and the one the other thing that I'm curious about is like what this Nihiligo does now that it's been flinched. I feel like Yuxiang has the opportunity Opportunity to possibly pivot here if he wants, or he even has the possibility to reselect his move as he didn't have the as he didn't attack the previous turn. Yeah, and even something like a power gem would be enough on the Xerneas at this point. So if you wanted to lock into that instead, uh, that would give you a beast boost if you get the KO with the Nihiligo, and then you can start snowballing. Uh, with the rest of the team, because the rest of the team's not really hitting the Nihiligo very well at all. Uh, at least you're not going to be losing the Xerneas this turn, because it is going to be protecting itself. Zashin joining in with a Protect as well, so it's just down to the Nihiligo and the Incineroar. Nihiligo goes for Sludge Wave, which is a move that will connect with all Pokémon on the field if, if they don't Protect, you know. Uh, does a good amount of chip damage to that Incineroar, <laughs> also gets the Poison. That is a 10% chance, so a little bit of luck on Evan's side as Incineroar attacking into the Protecting Zashin. Locking, in, locking into the Sludge Wave here makes perfect sense. Next to the Zashin, you're not hitting yourself. And if something like the Indeedee comes in to try and redirect the attacks away, it's not going to care about the Follow Me at all. You can still KO the Xerneas at this point with the Sludge Wave. And really, there's nothing Evan can do outside of maybe going for a double protect at this point. But even then, that's not going to cut it. The Xerneas really gets to click one attack at this point, and then it will be KO'd the Sludge Wave. You can't pivot into your Indeedee to try and keep it safe. And maybe you can pivot out some, some fake outs, but no, just going on the offensive, making use of that final attack. Moonblast bringing Nihiligo down into the yellow as we see the second Sledge Wave from this Choice Scarf. Going to pick up the knockout on Xerneas. Brings Incineroar down into the yellow, possibly putting it into knockout range uh, this turn as well. Nihiligo getting that beast boost uh, for its trouble with the knockout. And Incineroar revealing that it is holding a berry. It looks like a citrus berry. Uh, and then Zashin going for the play rough into the Incineroar. No, no need to help from the poison. That's enough to knock out. Yeah, not even having to go for a fighting type attack. If it was something like close combat, that could have reduced the defenses. So play rough, even after the Intimidate, still enough to do over half to the Incineroar. Uh, Torko joining the field, that's not going to really do too well against the Nihiligo. At least it's going to be locked into Sludge Wave. Can't go for the, the rock type attacks. But yeah, Ndidi was waiting in the back, and Sludge Wave was a way to bypass that. Ndidi and Torko, now that it's got a beast boot on the Nihiligo, they're really not going to want to take this Sludge Wave at all. Indeed, he's probably going to be KO'd in a combination of the Sludge Wave and the Behemoth Blade coming out. At least the Torko should be able to survive something. Maybe if it's carrying Earth Power, it can deal with the Nihiligo. But it's going to take a huge amount of damage on the way out. Uh, something like a Heat Wave or an Eruption. Uh, probably not an Eruption at this point. It won't be able to make use of its full HP. So uh, Fire-type attacks will still do a reasonable amount of damage to the Zashin. But there's still two Pokemon waiting in the back for Yu Zhang. Probably going to be something like that Pelipper that you can just switch in at some point and override that Drought and make the Torko pretty much useless. Yeah, you really don't even have to switch in the Pelipper this turn. Uh, Zacian does have a Protect available to it, and it will be making use of it as we'll see how much damage this uh, Beast Boost boosted Sludge Wave will do to the opposing Pokemon. 
brings Torkoal and Ndidi down into the yellow, poisons Ndidi as well, who fires back a expanding force to deal some big damage to that Nile Ego. Uh, will pick up the KO, but I think fortunately for Yuxiang, will give him the opportunity to send in that Pelipper without having to worry about taking any damage as Torkoal is left attacking with, I think, a yawn actually into that Zacian. Yeah, so not being able to get off any attacks into the Zash, and that just gives the free switch in into the Pelipper at this point, and so you'll just be able to overwrite the, the Drought, uh, really put a stop to any of the damage output that come out from Torkoal. The Ndidi is surely going to be in range of an attack that come out from the Ndidi, and with this Drizzle being set on the field, you can't knock out the Zash in, with, in one shot with your Torkoal anymore. You just get to click a Water-type attack to just be able to KO it so at this point. Uh, if it is the Hydro Pump that we've been seeing on Pelipper's picking up, a little bit more than Scald, then it does have to contend with that shaky accuracy, but that doesn't really matter at this point too much at all, uh, because even something like a Hurricane would be able to do a huge amount of damage, because we are in the rain, that would be 100% accurate. Uh, so should we just be able to wrap up this game uh, pretty neatly here? Yeah, Pelipper revealing to us that it doesn't know any Water-type moves, so that's definitely something interesting for us to keep in mind, as Pelipper left attacking with Hurricane into that protecting... Oh, just kidding, into that Torkoal, Zacian attacking into the Protected Ndidi. This uh, game is definitely going to go in Yushan's favor, as you have to wonder, what exactly can Evan do to adjust, given how much trouble the Nile Eagle alone caused this team? I'm, I'm still even just struggling myself, what, what can the adjustment can be? Nile Eagle and, Z and Zacian are very, very good against the Xerneas. Uh, leading with the Incineroar instead uh, meant that you have to take one of the super effective attacks onto the, the Xerneas because you're only opting for fake out. Uh, the Ndidi being KO'd here to the Behemoth Blade is going to wrap up this game, but maybe something like the Ndidi as a lead could be something uh, that could help out the Xerneas. If, you, if we have seen that Sludge Wave is on that Nihili Go, it would be able to bypass the Follow Me, but at least it's going to be spread damage and it won't do as much damage as something like a Sludge Bomb can do. And you can still see, keep the Xerneas safe from the Behemoth Blade. As we saw, even Intimidated, it did 90% to that Xerneas and put it in range of whatever uh, attack was going to hit it in the future uh, so maybe that could be an adjustment that could be made but, but that sludge wave does change things quite a lot because you can still at least ignore the follow me yeah, it's, it's almost like Evan needs to lead something like the Entei plus the Ndidi, for example, so that uh, he can at least have a bigger threat against that Nile Ego at the beginning. Um, I worry that if you assume that your opponent's going to lead like Zacian Nile Ego again, especially given how well game one went, uh, you're going to put yourself into a spot where you're just unable to deal damage to that Zacian, and as a result, the Ndidi is KO'd before it has the opportunity to expanding force and pick up that knockout on the Nile Ego. It's a really tough spot for this team. It definitely is. And yeah, Xerneas may not be able to be led against the possession and Nile Ego. I'm, I'm struggling to see Pokemon that would do well against that pairing. Maybe someone like the Venusaur on the Xerneas, that would allow you to switch into the Torkoal, get the Chlorophyll going. Maybe you can go for some Sleep Powders or maybe an Earth Power into the Nile Ego if it's carrying it as well. That could be some way if you are leading with the Xerneas, but outside of that, uh, it probably should be left in the back if it is bring, being brought to this game. Uh, because the Zacian and the Nile Ego can put on so much pressure onto that Xerneas, uh, you're going to be able to get some huge damage before the Geomancy will come off. And even if it gets that Geomancy up, we saw it was able to get one Moonblast off. It did some reasonable damage to the Nile Ego, but both of those Pokemon still resist that attack. And you've still got enough offensive pressure that you're still able to take care of the partner of the Xerneas at that point. Being the, Zer the Incineroar in that first game uh, could be in the Ndidi. That's still going to be taking a huge amount of damage from the Nile Ego and the Zacian as well. So Xerneas is an incredibly awkward spot, especially because you're usually relying on Pokemon, uh, like your Fire-type Pokemon, like the Torko and the, the Torko and the Entei, to be able to deal with the Zacian. Uh, but they're not going to pair up too well into the Nile Ego. Maybe the Entei can if it's carrying Stomp and Tantrum, uh, but with the Choice Scarf on the Nile Ego, it should be able to move first before the Entei, uh, which in normal, the Entei being normally Choice Scarf would be able to outspeed the Zacian at least. Uh, but the Nile Ego is going to somewhat keep it safe because it will still be able to outspeed with its own Choice Scarf most likely and get those rock type attacks off yeah it's a really tough spot and it just goes to show you like how uh dangerous of an opponent the Zacian is for the Xerneas teams as they have to bring so many Pokemon specifically just to counter it. We're seeing a mix-up from both these trainers in game two. Ndidi Venusaur out on the field for Evan and Yu Xiong sending out the Nile Ego this time accompanied by the Landorus. 
No slash in as the lead, sir. So, an interesting adjustments coming up from both players. The lander still makes sense. It usually has access to something like Sludge Bomb. Would have been able to hit that Xerneas pretty hard. But Venusaur and Didi definitely makes a lot of sense coming out for Evan here. You've got the potential to go for a redirection with the fo Follow Me. And then you can go for something like a Sleep Powder uh, without the fear of being hit by anything other than potential Sludge Wave that come out from the Nihiligo. Which wouldn't do too much damage to either Pokemon at this point. Uh, so, you can... Probably just go for those sleep powders. Maybe the Earth Power as well, if you have it. Uh, could be able to pick up the knockout on the Nihiligo. If you take care of the Nihiligo, uh, while you still have your Indeedee around, that would free up your Xerneas quite a lot, because then you'd be able to get those Follow Me's next to the Xerneas uh, without that Sludge Wave potential anymore. So whether this Venusaur has access to Earth Power, or if it's just going to go for the sleep powders, that uh, could be very crucial here. Uh, but it could be moving even faster now that that Torko has switched in for the Indeedee. Yeah, it looks like Evan opting to keep that... Indeed, he's safe for later, assuming that the Xerneas is the last Pokemon in his party. And uh, Venus are able to move first and connect Sleep Powder with the Nihiligo, forcing it to go asleep for possibly the next four turns. Uh, Landorus will be the only Pokemon that attacks, but unfortunately for that Torkoal, taking an Earth Power immediately on the switch and is knocked out. Yeah, being able to call that switch in. Uh, if you switch in the Sword Cold, that allows the Venusaur to outspeed and get the Sleep Powder into the Nihiligo, uh, but then able to call that with the Earth Power to pick up the knockout there. But Sleeping Nihiligo does somewhat free up the Xerneas a little bit. You've got the Sun, bo the sun boosting the Chlorophyll as well on the Venusaur. Potentially go into your Xerneas now, and then if you connect one more Sleep Powder onto the Landorus, that means that the Xerneas is going to be a bit more safe going into this turn to set up a Geomancy. You've got to contend with the Nihiligo potentially still waking up, because uh, it has taken its first turn of sleep at this point, uh, but you probably still need to be taking that risk if you're having. There's not going to be many other opportunities to be able to get that Geomancy set up at, uh, at this point. But actually, no, the Xerneas is not switching in. It's just going to be the Indeedee, so maybe opting to go for something like an Expanding Force while the Nihiligo is still asleep, because that would still do a very reasonable chunk of damage uh, to the Nihiligo. If you manage to connect the Sleep Powder onto the Landorus, uh, then you get some free damage with the Expanding Force onto both Pokemon. Uh, Expanding Force should put the Nihiligo into range of any attack that the Venusaur will would want to go for even if it's not carrying a ground type attack a grass type attack should be enough in combination with an expanding force to be able to KO the Nihiligo and so once you KO'd that Pokemon it's still going to free up the, the Xerneas that's sh surely waiting in the back uh, a lot more uh, you just need to keep your Ndidi safe to still have that redirection available so that you can get that Geomancy in the future. Helping hand from Ndidi will be boosting the power of Venusaur's uh, Grass Knot, it, not enough to pick up the knockout on that Landorus, however. Nihiligo will still remain asleep this turn as Landorus free to send a second Earth Power into that and Didi bringing it down below half its health. Yeah, interesting by going for the, the Grass Knot there. Uh, not doing enough damage to that Landorus and maybe needing another Helping Hand boost to be able to pick up that knockout. And that will be a turn that you're not hitting this Nihiligo again. It's taken two turns of sleep at this point. Much more likely to be able to wake up um, the Venusaur has still had the potential to go for a Sleep Powder into the opposing Landorus. Won't get it this turn, though, because that Landorus is protecting itself. It is, as indeed he also goes for a Protect this turn. Venusaur moving next with another Earth Power this time into the Nihiligo is, easy to e is easily able to pick up that KO. Yeah, that's a really strong turn for Evan there. Uh, effectively getting that KO for free at that point, and because the Landris did protect, even if it did go on the offensive, if it went for the Earth Power into the Ndidi, wouldn't have done anything that turn because of that protect. So really, really nice play for Evan there to be able to pick up that knockout and take care of that Nihiligo. Not able to move at all in this game because that Sleep Powder uh, put a stop to any of the attacks it could, it could go for. But now the Pelipper is hitting the field, the Torkoal has already been KO'd. It's going to be the end of the Chlorophyll for the Venusaur. It has, yeah, and I'm I'm honestly uh, curious how the Venusaur is going to adjust now that uh, it is slower again, and this Pelipper's on the field can really threaten big damage with Hurricane. Yeah, and the Ndidi's gone for Protect at this point as well, so it can't keep itself safe from the Landorus anymore. You can just go for the Earth Power into the Ndidi and pick up the Knockout. Maybe the Helping Hand is needed again from the Venusaur, because the Landorus is probably going to be outspeeding Venusaur at this point. Uh, so maybe you go for the Helping Hands before the Ndidi gets KO'd to the Earth Power so you can pick up the Knockout. But then you've still got to contend with the Pelipper as well, uh, so potentially need to go for the Sleep Powder into the Pelipper instead to keep that Venusaur from being knocked out this this turn, and then just whatever way is waiting in the back half, the Ndidi's being KO'd, maybe you can do something there. Uh, but it's Ndidi there, it looks like it went for a double protect and did fail it. Sleep Powder will connect with that Pelipper though. Uh, so even though the Ndidi missed the double protect, the Pelipper and the Venusaur will remain on the field for this turn. Earth Power able to secure the knockout onto Ndidi. 
Yes, the Venusaur still outsped that Landorus, even though we're in the rain at this point. So, very slow Landorus, very bulky Landorus. You pro probably saw that with the Helping Hand Grass not, not doing too much damage as well, at seeing that bulk come into play. Uh, but no Xerneas is brought to this game. It is going to be Entei awaiting in the back. Uh, that's going to be very good against the Zashian waiting there in the back for Yu Zhang, but... Against the Pelipper, it's still going to be a bit awkward. At least you'll still be able to do some pretty good damage with the Grass Knot from the Venusaur. And maybe the Entei is still not, uh, strong enough to pick up the knockout on the Vandras. When it, if it was in the sun or not even in the rain, it would have been able to pick up the knockout for sure. But in the rain, it's going to be a bit... A, a, bit awkward whether it is going to be able to pick up the KO, especially because this Landorus is definitely a bulky one. Uh, because it is slower than the Venusaur, it's definitely going to have a lot of bulk to it. Uh, may be able to survive that attack. May need the combination of two attacks to be able to pick up the knockout, especially because there's no more helping hand from the Indeedee. It's going to be very close if just Grass not on its own would be able to pick up the KO on the Landorus. And maybe you need to go for something like a Stone Edge to be able to hit the Pelipper as well, because Fire-type attacks aren't going to be doing too much damage, but it is going to be attacking the Pelipper with the Sacred Fire here. And that is enough to break the focus sash. And Sleep Powder will connect again with the Landorus on Yu Xiang's side of the field. So unless Pelipper decides to wake up this turn, it looks like he will be unable to attack. Yes, it's exactly whatever needs. You need to be connecting all the Sleep Powders at this point. Any of the mists, any any Sleep Powder that would have missed would have allowed probably a KO for Yu, Yu Zhang going for an attack. Uh, with the Pelipper going for the Hurricanes, the Landorus could have gone for an Earth Power. Let's be able to KO the Entei as well. And the Nihiligo has put a stop to as well. So Sleep Powder is definitely the way in uh, going into this match for Evan uh, that he needs, putting all the Pokemon to sleep. Being able to still out speed even in the rain is very crucial for this Venusaur. He's kept this Entei safe this turn from the Landorus going for the Earth Power. And you've broken the Sash on the Pelipper as well. Uh, we'll have to see if the Venusaur is going to be strong enough to be able to pick up the Knockout on this Pelipper. And maybe it will be able to after a second Sacred Fire. It's going to be close as Venusaur goes for Sludge Bomb, is able to connect the knockout with the Pelipper, which is good because Yu Xiong actually locked into Weather Ball for an attack that turn. Uh, Landorus does wake up. Earth Power will be enough to knock out that Entei in a single hit. Yeah, and that's unfortunate for Evan there. D did need to rely on the sleep. Uh, but yeah, getting the one turn sleep with the Landorus, able to wake up. And now the Zashin gets to come in. It's still going to be outspeeding this Venusaur for sure. Even though it's able to outspeed the Landorus, not going to be able to outspeed the Zashin. And it will just be able to click Behemoth Blade at this point. If it is Focus Sash on the Venusaur, you just get to follow up with your Landorus. Or the Zashin again if you go for the Sleep Powder into uh, the Landorus Incarnate. So Evan doing exactly what they needed to do to get in, to, into this game. Because uh, a pretty disastrous game one that didn't really seem like there was anything Evan can do. Uh, but being able to do a lot of things with the Venusaur, the Sleep Powders was definitely a very good strategy to go for there maybe just needed one more turn of sleep on the landorus because uh, if that did stay asleep you get to keep your ente going into this turn uh, you could potentially go for a sacred fire and a grass knot into the landorus and that should be able to pick up the knockout at that point and then maybe the ente would be able to do something against the opposing zashin but now that you've lost that uh, with the landorus waking up immediately you're just going to be able to click a couple of attacks with the zashin or the landorus at this point and pick up the knockout on the venusaur yeah, I think that we would have had to see that Entei connect a Sacred Fire and a bird with that uh, Zashin to stop it from dealing as much damage as it can do, as Behemoth Blade is enough to knock out that Venusaur in a single hit. And as a result, Yu Shang winning this round for China, bringing them up 3-1 against Singapore. They are one win away from moving on to top four. Yeah, and they've got three opportunities to be able to do it as well. So a really, really favorable position for China. Very close now to that top four. Uh, but just a, a real showing there of uh, how how the, the team matchup can make a, make a difference in the game. Evan absolutely played exactly how they needed to in that game too. But still not really anything they could do, especially in that game one as well with the sludge wave on the Nile Ego. Uh, the matchup was just so far uh, in Yu Zhang's favor that it's, it's, even with... What seemed like very, very strong adjustments coming out from Evan, still not able to, to call back in the game, having to rely on those sleep powders, still managed to connect all the sleep powders, but not getting enough turns of the sleep and just being able to, to really snowball the game completely for Yu Zhang. Yeah, I think it really was the loss of the Torkoal game turn one in game two that uh, really sort of tipped the scales as once Pelipper was able to safely enter the field and rain was set up uh, that felt like unfortunately that was it you know you lost your speed with the Venusaur you lost the ability to do big damage with your sacred fire um, it was just very well played uh, that earth power to take out that Torkoal a great prediction
Yeah, so that's going to be it for this third game. Again, another very fast-paced game, but getting through these games at a very reasonable pace going forward here. So we'll have to see if the next two games are going to be as quick or if they're going to be a bit longer. Uh, but we'll have to cut to that short break first to be able to find that out. So we'll be cutting to our short break now, and we'll be right back with the fourth game of this of Saturday.